And now for a short session on type length value encoding. Let me introduce NetTrek. NetTrek is the original internet team game first implemented in 1988. It was originally written in C. There are servers in C and recently Swift. There are interoperable clients written in C, Java, Python, Objective-C, Swift, and even HTML5. The networking code for NetTrek was really an experimentation, an experiment, pushing the limits of the TCP IP protocol in its early days. Remember, IP version 4 only went live in 1983. NetTrek can switch, in NetTrek, you play on a client, you connect to a server, uh, you can have up to 16 players playing simultaneously. They can, the players can switch between TCP and UDP, and in the early networks of that time, it was often necessary to switch to UDP to get, to, to get a decent response. NetTrek had the first interplayer chat functionality in a video game. So it's, it's the first game where you can play on the internet against people you don't know and actually chat with them about tactics and strategy. And it is, NetTrek is the grandfather of modern internet video games. For now, let's talk about the TCP version of the NetTrek protocol. NetTrek runs over TCP port 2592. So you have a stream of bytes. And the stream of bytes is encoded into, you have a NetTrek packet followed by a NetTrek packet followed by a NetTrek packet. Each NetTrek packet has a type and then it has data. A type and then data. A type and then data. When you are reading in a client or on the server, because the NetTrek information goes in both directions in order for the game to function, when you're reading from a TCP stream, you are not guaranteed to get an entire NetTrek packet at a time. So, for example, here we did a read and we got a certain number of bytes and that was enough for the first NetTrek packet. We got our type and we got all of our data. And then for the second NetTrek packet, we only got part of the NetTrek packet in this read. So we get the type and then we get some of our data. And then the next time we do our read, we get the rest of the data from that NetTrek packet. And then we get the following NetTrek packet. In this diagram, it shows that we got a complete follow-up NetTrek packet. An important thing here is that servers and clients know much know how much data there is based on the type. So if you receive a type message, if, if the type is type number three, then you know how many bytes of data to read in order to, to fill up that NetTrek packet. Here's a list of some of the NetTrek messages that can be sent from the server to the remote client. We have a message, which is like a chat message. We have a player info, which is general information about the player. We have kill statistics. We have the player's XY location. We have torpedo status location, or we have torpedo status information. We have torpedo location and, and so on. And there's about 40 to 50 different message types. Here's details on the first two of the types. So in, the, the met, in every type, the first octet, which is type car here, is the type of the, the message. So this is, this is message type number one. So in this car will be encoded one. Down here we have uh, the player info message, which is message type number two. And so the type will be number two. And then in each message, we have the rest of the data. So here we have one byte, a byte for flags, a byte for the recipient, and a byte for byte for who who it's from. And then we have the message itself, which is 80 bytes in length. So this message packet is always 84 bytes or 84 octets on the wire. And then this message packet, uh, which is player info, we have the type of message, which is always two for this particular message. We have the player number, we have the ship type, and we have the team. 
each is one byte. So this message is four bytes. So when you're reading the messages, if you you read one byte and and if you read a, a two, then you know your message is type two. So your client knows that that message is four bytes long. If you read the first byte and the type is one, then you know that message is 84 bytes long. So you have to read 84 bytes of data before the NetTrack packet is complete. This is called type value encoding, and it was a mistake. What if we needed to add a new message type? If we added a new message type and the client, if we added a new message type to the server and then the server sent that message to the client, but how many bytes would the client advance? With the type value encoding, you can't add a new type without updating all servers and clients simultaneously. As soon as a client does not know how many bytes to read in a message, it cannot read any later message, messages because it can't figure out where the next where the next message begins so it can't it can't figure out the type of the next next message we cannot even update message length to longer chat message lengths without crashing clients Mess for NetTrack, message length is set to 80 and it is stuck on 80 unless we simultaneously upgrade all servers and clients which is not practical not only do we need to up up update the 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 source code and all the, the servers and clients we would need to get all of the users out on the internet to update their clients simultaneously and we cannot create a new long message type without crashing clients because this new message 51 or whatever, the clients don't know, you know, they receive message 51, they have no idea how long it is, so they don't know how far to advance their, how many bytes to read before they get to the next message. A more flexible encoding is type length value encoding, also called key length value encoding. You specify you, so you have you still have a type field which indicates the message type but then you and the type field is a specific number of bytes which is the same on all of your messages and then you have a specific number of bytes to specify the length of the value and then you can encode the value so here we have a type length value where we have one byte for the type and this particular message is type 12. And then we have one byte for the length, and this particular message we encode two for the length. And then, and then the length of two means that the value is two bytes, and, and then we encode the two bytes. So the recipient can read the type and the length fields because those are always a fixed length for all messages. And then the recipient knows how many bytes to read to get the value and get to the end of the message. And even if the recipient does not understand the type and has never encountered it before, it at least knows how many bytes to ignore until it gets to the next message, which hopefully it can successfully decode. So that way you can, you can transmit new message types from your server to a client, and then the client can still at least know how many bytes to skip to get to the next message. Some protocols make the length field include the type, length, and value. So if we did that here, then the length would be four. And that's fine, however you want to do it. Just pick one and stick with it for your application forever. Here's another example of the type length value encoding. Here's our stream of bytes and we get our first uh, we interpret the first byte as the type, and then the next byte is the length. We know the length is two, so we the value is two bytes. And then we know to interpret the next byte as a new type. We get type 71. We know to interpret the next length, the next byte as a length, so we get a value of three. And then we know that the value is is three bytes. And again, if we if type 71, I'm sorry, if type 12 was unknown to our client. Well, we still know that the type field is one byte. We know the length field is one byte. We know to skip two bytes. And so we know that we can start uh, reading and interpreting the next field, type 71, here. And so we may, have we may not understand this piece of data here, but we can continue, we can continue and understand the next, pack the next packet with our, our type of 71. 
there is one other more complex but more flexible way to encode, encode the length field. We can use a variable size length field and one of the ways to do this is called basic encoding rules. And if the, the first bit of the length field is zero, meaning that then, then the remaining seven bits indicate the length of the value. So, uh, and that would handle fields of range zero through 127. If the first bit of the length field is one, then the remaining seven bits indicate the actual length of the length field. So here, for example, we have a message, which is message type 12, and we have a basic encoding rules for length, which is only one byte, and it is value 130. So the first bit is set to one, so the remaining seven bits, which hold the decimal value of two, encode the length of the the length. And so we know our length, we have two, our, our length is encoded in two bytes of information. And then we have two bytes of length, and the first one is a one, and the second one is 10, and assuming big Indian, which you should in a network protocol, that, that translates into 256 plus 10, so that's our value is 266 bytes in length. And that way we can encode a message of basically any length. There are other ways to encode data in a TCP UDP stream. Uh, we have JavaScript object notation. Uh, HTTP and HTTPS can use chunked tra transfer encoding, which we will cover later. Uh, and then there are many protocols with their own custom encodings. Uh, over here we have an example uh, of, uh, of JSON where we have the left curly brace and then you know that particular message ends when you get to the corresponding right curly brace, which you know you read in your message and then you actually have to process it as text, which can be a little inconvenient, but that's what libraries are for. So there are other options besides type length value encoding.